Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with another special guest on the gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And every time I have a special guest these last few weeks, I think, let's see, how do they meet this young man? When I met Mr. Jason Lucas, probably now six or eight or nine years ago, I don't know, it's just time goes by so fast, but we met uh, uh, after a talk I had done and he's become a good friend and just somebody who's uh, very talented, much younger than me, but I won't hold that against him. So Jason, welcome to the podcast. David, thank you for having me. You bet. All kind things. Thank you. I appreciate it. You bet. You bet. So I don't know if I mentioned to you much. The main reason I was doing this is that just people I know that are that are good friends or people I really have a lot of respect for and, and kind of want to ask a few questions that may end up helping some other people. So let me start off with this. What has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this? And as we just said, seven, eight weeks and shelter in place and so forth, but the better part of two months, what, what's kind of helped you? Or what's the thing you kind of leaned on to get you through this so far? Yeah, you know, I, I as we've talked about, um, when you're working from home, I am finding that I tend to sort of always be on the clock, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm having to force myself to kind of get away from the computer because there's always things that need to be done or one more email or one more meeting that could be scheduled. So I'm trying to do my best to find that separation time because mm -hmm. I do have kids at home and a 12 year old boy who needs exercise and some dad time. And so mm -hmm. I'm leveraging that time with him to kind of mentally be in another place. And I'll also admit that guy got a garden started. You know, I think a lot of people are taking this opportunity to start a garden and I did the same thing. So oh, that's, that's cool. That's cool. And do you yeah. find, Obviously, I talk about gratitude. It's my main thing, the gratitude guy. Has your, what you're grateful for, has it changed these last six or seven weeks? Or is it the same thing you were grateful for before that we came into this? Or has it changed now that we are into this a couple of months? Well, I have to first say, you know, I'm thankful that my family right now has got their health. And mm -hmm. I'm also super thankful that I personally do not know someone right now who has COVID or who has died from it. That's so I, I haven't had to feel, I have a lot of, you know, sympathy for the folks out there who are having to deal with that on top of, um, you know, this, this stay at home order. And then the second thing I have to say is that I do have a job that allows me to work from home. So mm -hmm. I didn't get uh, laid off or unemployed and, and I'm super thankful for that. You know, I do have friends that are in a position where they um, were either self-employed or, um, you know, like in the hospitality industry where the clientele just simply, you know, vape was vaporized and, mm -hmm. and so now they're struggling. So I, there's so much to be thankful for, David. I mean, I could provide a list a mile long if I thought about it, but um, yet, you know, the health of our family and having a job is probably the top two. That's excellent. That's excellent. I think too, you mentioned, I think about how you've done when I followed you through working at Microsoft and now Amazon and how working at home and there are certain disciplines around that that are very important and you just touched on that. And I think, but in terms of somebody who's uh, moving logs up in the mountains and doing all the different things that you've done, any tips or thoughts or ideas, you mentioned a garden, which is a great one, for people to be doing while they're sheltering in place at home that uh, they might be not aware of as some of the things they could be doing during this time? Yeah, I mean, the, there's no restriction against putting a couple chairs out in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, We've done that. Uh, n other neighbors have put chairs out in their driveway or they'll, you know, bring a couple chairs down. So we don't have to be completely isolated. I'd suggest uh, taking this as an opportunity to meet your neighbors and, um, you know, maybe bring down any previous barriers there or, you know, we've become kind of socially averse as a, as a society these days. So an opportunity for that. Um, I'd also say just uh, being outside, I think, is the main thing for me, mm -hmm. is not keeping yourself cooped up in the house and getting some fresh air, things right. like that. Right. Um, 
you know, if you do know people that have property and things, I'm not opposed to having, sharing what I have too, you know? Um, so giving people an opportunity to have a place to go is also, you know, um, something that you can offer. That's neat. That's neat. And do you think, again, knowing the kind of ways you juggle a lot of balls, do a lot of different things, you're not just a one dimensional guy. You've had a lot of things going on in the time that I've known you. Is there anything you've thought of during these last few weeks that's going to kind of be, gosh, once this thing ends and whether it's a vaccine or getting back in stages, back into quote society, that you're going to kind of hit the ground running? Is there anything you've thought of? I'm going to really, you know, bear down and do this once this is kind of over. Well, you know, my wife and I had our 15th wedding anniversary here yeah. just a few days, a couple of days ago. And, um, you know, we had a trip planned to Puerto Vallarta. Oh, that was wow. going to be kind of our 15 year vacation getaway. And that obviously did not happen. And so, you know, I hate to say it, but gosh, the travel is a luxury and being able to go places and see things is um, something I think we take for granted. So mm -hmm. I think I'll be more motivated to get out there and do some things. Like I say, I've got kids and um, everyone wants to have a screen these days, but my wife and I do our best to get out there and try to experience some stuff. And I, I, it motivates me to want to do that more often. Yeah. Great point. Great point. And I think travel, I've been so fascinated by what uh, some of the answers that people have gotten from these questions. And certainly uh, I actually did a video on the 10, what was it? The gratitude perspective on the top 10 things from coronavirus and things like having this ability, like you and I could be at a, at a coho cafe or something. It feels like we're just three feet apart right here on. Yeah. Zoom. And yet yeah. you're miles apart and I live in Issaquah and you live out North. And so it's interesting how there are a lot of silver linings and Kind of with that in mind, my last question is, so do you have what you would consider to be kind of a quote, a saying, a mantra, or something that kind of sustains you through life, but especially through a time like this? Well, when the going gets tough, I always lean on this or something that's something that's some sort of a philosophy that kind of sustains you through something like this? Gosh, that's a good question. Um, Jeez, I don't know if I live by anything in particular that's coming up. I'm I'm a positive and I'm an optimistic person. Mm -hmm. And so I just try to stay motivated towards my aspirations mm -hmm. and not lose sight or be um, deterred from continuing to just sort of, I suppose if I were to say anything, I, the, I say a lot, just plow forward. Oh, I like, that. Um, I like that. So I do do that a lot. I just say, you know, just continue to plow forward and just keep going mm -hmm. because um, I do feel like there is, there is a, um, there's sort of a, an emotional thing that can happen in these times. I would think that would slow you down, mm -hmm. demotivate you significantly. Um, take the energy out of your aspirations, but I just feel like it doesn't have to. Yeah, good point. I, I think energy can just be put in different directions that can still enable you to kind of push things forward if you try, if you continue to plow forward. <laughs> I like that, no, not like that, I like that plow forward. And I, I was thinking as you said that too, energy, you know, certainly something I've always prided myself in having a lot of energy and being a motivator and inspiring and things like this. And I think back, as I said, when I have a guest on here about how did I meet this person? And I remember meeting you and just kind of think, I like this guy. I like this guy's energy. Or yeah. We need to have a cup of coffee or something. So, yeah. you know, like minds think alike and, you know, one bad apple spoils a whole bunch. So you can get together with a negative person and it can bring you down too. And it is a choice. And I say that. That's right. That's right. Choice. So yeah, choice to have energy and just plow through it. I like that. I like that. So, hey, you know, you're the one that always tells me and I always take it to heart when you're like, you know, you got something between your ears and yeah. as long as you can use it and keep it motivated to pursue your aspirations, it will get you there. You exactly. know, and be blessed. Be blessed. You can. Right. And to be grateful, and I think between the years, the gray matter or whatever, it's like as much as Jason and David and a number of other us, of, of, of us would like to take credit for that, our parents gave us that. 
And so yeah. I'm really happy about the gray matter we got that told us to get educated, to work hard, to, to give to others and to help other people, which is exactly the reason why I wanted to do this, that if there's a little nugget or something that a person can take away from each one, it's, uh, it's really, really helpful. So, well, listen, Mr. Lucas, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. You bet.